as far as the police department's concerned, this is one of our favorite times of the year to be able to celebrate past achievements, and we're happy to be able to do that in front of city council tonight. Uh, our program's gonna consist of uh, several different people getting different awards. Uh, those awards consist of a perfect attendance award, uh, commendation, exemplary service award, employee of the year. Before we go into those, and I'll explain each one of those in greater detail, uh, we have an unscheduled, uh, unannounced award that we like to give first. The first award that we like to give is the Dedicated Service Award, and that's for uh, Tracy Rankin. Can you come up here and join me, please? You can stay six feet away. Most of you know, but for those of you that don't know, uh, up until recently, Tracy uh, served as our administrative assistant in the police department, and now she serves as administrative assistant uh, for the city manager. So uh, she worked uh, with us for about 15 years, and during the 15 years, uh, she started as a dispatcher and worked there for a few years, and then came back to the back offices and worked as administrative assistant for the majority of her time. Uh, during that time, Tracy has proven to be invaluable uh, numerous occasions. Uh, she's received multiple different awards, Employee of the Year, Exemplary Service, numerous commendations over the years. Uh, there's uh, probably not an award that Tracy has not, has not won. Uh, Tracy's service to the police department and to the community has always been her number one priority. She strives to do whatever she can for the betterment of the department and for the city and the community as a whole, and it shows every day. And we were very, very sad to lose her. The only saving grace is she just, she's just right across the street from us. So uh, congratulations on your promotion. We miss you. Thank you for your years of service. We had to keep that as a surprise because Tracy's the one that does the uh, agenda, so she would have known. So. Okay, uh, we'll start with the Perfect Attendance Award. The Perfect Attendance for 2020 is even more meaningful. There were some things that we experienced as a police department and as a community that uh, we've never experienced before. And some of those things that we experienced were pretty traumatic and pretty uh, eventful. Uh, one is still going on, which is the COVID-19, the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, officers and uh, staff had to deal with that all year long uh, and are still dealing with that. Uh, we've had about 70% uh, attrition as far as uh, exposure to the uh, coronavirus from last March till now. The other event that, that was very difficult for us to maneuver was the civil unrest that occurred, uh, not just in Seattle or Portland, but also in Dayton and the surrounding communities. Uh, a lot of people might not realize that uh, many of our officers volunteered to serve uh, with other departments as they supplied traffic control and also crowd control for a lot of these demonstrations that occurred. Uh, we even had one in our own city that had assistance with some other departments. So our officers were quite busy with that for several months of the year. So having perfect attendance under those circumstances, besides the normal circumstances that police officers face, uh, inclement weather, shift work, uh, meals that uh, you may or may not be able to have, uh, having perfect attendance as a police officer or in law enforcement field is rare and we have six people in 2020 that accomplished that feat, which is uh, to me phenomenal and speaks uh, very highly of their dedication. And I'd like to start with, uh, first of all, Sergeant Jeremy Branham. I don't think Sergeant Branham has been absent since preschool. <laughs> <laughs> Next would be Detective Bob Bell. For you early risers, you might see Bob here at the police department at uh, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. He's here quite frequently at that time. Uh, Detective Scott Lawson. Mm -hmm. 
you'll hear Scott's name again tonight. Officer Jared Moore. You'll also hear Officer Moore's name again tonight. Uh, one of our newer officers, Officer Ian Hogston. And last, but uh, definitely not least, the person we probably pick on the most, uh, records clerk, Christine Tatel. Uh, the next award that we're going to present is going to be for accommodation. Uh, some of you might recall this actually was in the news uh, a couple times uh, on December 15th. Uh, before we, I do that, I'd like to call Jared Moore to come up. On uh, December 15th, uh, Officer Moore received a call over Canterbury Court from uh, a pretty upset uh, individual. She had just realized that she had been scammed out of a couple hundred dollars. Um, she tried to sell her laptop, uh, computer, and equipment to a couple uh, that ended up paying her with counterfeit money. And she didn't realize it was counterfeit until too late. Uh, Officer Moore went over to take a report, and uh, he did so, left, and then uh, later on that evening, he and his wife came back and uh, gave the lady the money that she lost, and out of his own pocket. So the uh, woman called the news. The news ran the story, much to Officer Moore's chagrin. He did not want any publicity, and he probably is not very happy I'm doing this now, um, but that's, that's too bad. <laughs> so uh, accommodation is to be awarded for an act that is considered above and beyond the call of duty or giving evidence of selflessness or highly professional conduct by an employee, and to me, that meets all those standards. So, Officer Moore, congratulations on your accommodation. Next award that we're going to be presenting are the Exemplary Service Award. We have two award winners this year. Uh, first award winner is Officer John Garwood. Please step down. And the second award winner is going to be Officer Chris Fairchild. Please join us, Chris. We'll start with Officer Garwood first. Uh, on July 5th of 2020, Officer Garwood, along with uh, other members of the department, responded to the 100 block of West Main Street on a domestic violence call. Man and wife, the uh, husband, ended up barricading himself in a bedroom, had furniture and other things in front of the door to uh, hinder entry. Also in the bedroom were numerous weapons uh, of uh, many different varieties. Uh, he, was, he was heavily armed. Uh, Officer Garwood spoke to the gentleman for 45 minutes or more and was able to de-escalate the situation and eventually convinced him to surrender. And for that act, Officer Garwood is receiving the Exemplary Service Award. <laughs> Officer Chris Fairchild. Officer Fairchild, uh, some of you may not know, is uh, our representative on the SOFAST Task Force. And SOFAST stands for Southern Ohio Fugitive Apprehension Strike Team. So if you watch the news and you hear about this task force that goes out and arrests violent felons all over Montgomery County and the surrounding counties, that's so fast. So that's what Officer uh, Fairchild does. Uh, Officer Fairchild has been serving with them for two, two years? Two years now. In uh, 2020, he was quite busy, even though he only works there one day a week. He's extremely busy and extremely productive. Um, a lot of times when you have violent felons like this, even if they're not in our community, the crime that they commit and everything that they do affects our community uh, indirectly. And there, he also has had cases in West Carrollton, and I'll talk about one of those here in a second. One of the cases that he had involved two suspects that were wanted for murder 
through Officer Fairchild's investigation, he was able to apprehend them and get six counts of uh, murder, two counts of aggravated robbery, three counts each of aggravated burglary, felonious assault, and kidnapping. And the way that Officer Fairchild did this was through the phone records, personal surveillance, and interviewing family members. And again, this is a one day a week assignment for him. The second incident involved a, a situation at Miami Township. They had a shooting at one of their hotels. Officer Fairchild was able to locate and so fast was able to apprehend the subject and charge him with aggr attempted aggravated murder and two counts each of aggravated robbery and felonious assault. Mimesburg had a case involving a young gentleman. Officer Fairchild was able to locate him and they were able to arrest him and then charged him with felonious assault, abduction, and domestic violence involving a domestic case. And then last but not least, uh, a case in West Carrollton involving a former Ohio State uh, University football player who fled the scene and actually I think ended up in Texas, fled to Texas. Officer Fairchild located him, spoke to him, convinced him to return and turn himself in, which he did. So he was charged with carrying a concealed weapon, improper handling of a firearm, aggravated drug possession, and maybe some other minor violations. But those are just a few of the highlights of Officer Fairchild's uh, so fast uh, one day a week assignment in 2020. So the Exemplary Services Award is to be awarded for an act or conduct which is considered to be outstanding. The act or conduct that was exhibited directly contributed to the safety of the public or the coordination and benefit of the members of the West Carroll Police Department. And again, I think both of these gentlemen exhibit all those characteristics. Okay. And our last award, but not least, is Employee of the Year. And that's Detective Scott Lawson. I thought I'd start with maybe some things that others say about Scott when I was reading all the submissions for his Employee of the Year uh, nomination. About the nominations, uh, there were a couple of nominations, but I would hear people talk about Scott and say, are you going to nominate him? Well, if you don't nominate him, I'm going to nominate him. Well, okay, you go ahead and nominate him, then, I, then we won't both nominate him at the same time. And that occurred numerous times. So Scott uh, was, is very well thought of with the department. But what some other people are saying about Scott is Scott doesn't seek a, a confession, he seeks the truth. Scott works very, very hard through his interview process, talking to people, talking to witnesses, talking to suspects. Uh, the confession is not what he's after. He's after the truth. Sometimes that takes a lot longer, but he puts in the time. He's extremely thorough with all cases. He's detail-oriented. I, I hit on that already. He takes a great deal of time with every single case that he has. I know a lot of you already know that uh, our detectives don't have the luxury of sitting back and waiting for cases to come to them. Uh, they are quite busy as it is. So, and, and Scott, even though he's very, very busy, he takes a lot of time to do detailed work. Scott has a positive attitude. He likes to help other people. Officers, uh, especially younger officers, will go to him and talk to him about different cases. They'll ask for his advice on things, and uh, they seek him out quite regularly. Scott also volunteered for the protests. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of that or not, but uh, Scott volunteered uh, to serve on different teams that would be sent to assist other cities as they would have these uh, demonstrations. Uh, Scott would volunteer to serve in that capacity besides the duty that, that he was performing as a detective. Just a couple cases specifically. In April, we had aggravated robbery. Uh, Scott interviewed three suspects. He did a lot of clever interview techniques. He got confessions, and each one of them are serving three to six year prison sentences. In May, uh, he had a very unique case. It was an aggravated robbery, but uh, he found a, a, a great deal of THC edible gummy bears, gummy bears that were laced with THC. Those were new. Those are new to the area. Uh, those are so new that no one really knew how to test them. 
and we had to send them to Michigan, and Scott had to find a, a lab that would test them, and he had to coordinate with the prosecutor's office how they might go about prosecuting them, because they had never done that. Uh, very unique case. Uh, through that also, that same case, he was able to seize about $24,000 in cash, and then also get a conviction, and the suspect was sentenced to six years. In August, there was the death of a, a six-week-old, uh, Scott did a lengthy investigation, arrested the suspect, and the, uh, the wording from the prosecutor was, this is a textbook investigation on the way this type of case should be handled. In November, one of our banks was robbed. Scott was able to locate the, the suspects, interviewed them, obtained a search warrant, located evidence including cash, clothing, and uh, a dye pack and then also convictions on that case. Those are just a few of the cases that Scott has worked on. And I'm sure Scott would be the first one to tell you that he does not do this alone. Uh, our detective section is comprised of Detective Allison and Detective Bell. All three of them are extremely busy. All three of them are extremely talented individuals. Uh, but Scott uh, really, really uh, proved himself this year. So. Without further ado, 2020 Employee of the Year Award is given for a department employee who is recognized for an act, achievement, or a series of events in the previous year. And this year, Detective Scott Lawson. There's just a list of the award winners. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief. I'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate everybody that has received awards tonight. Getting ready for the meeting this evening, what stood out to me probably more than anything in, in the list of the awards that were given tonight was the perfect attendance. And I'm going to tell you what, that says a lot about the integrity of the department for you to want to come in and do your job on your scheduled days and not blow it off and, and take a sick day. I mean, it just, it, it you know, it starts at the top with the chief, but it speaks highly of the department and the employees that you have. Other comments by council? Um, I'd like to congratulate everybody. And the perfect attendance just blew my mind. Working in healthcare through the pandemic, police officers alone, without the issues that were going on, the unrest and the protests and the pandemic in 2020, it's hard to have perfect attendance due to injuries. Um, burnout, it's just got highly stressful. That just really impressed me. Um, we were just talking before the meeting about um, people being out sick at, at the hospitals with exposures and things, and that's just amazing um, for the attendance. All the officers involved in your commendations, outstanding job. Detective Lawson, I know some of the case that you worked on is just, I've seen more and more one of his cases, I don't want to say specifically, details of that kind of incident is just shattering how you could even do it, um, investigate something like that. Thank you all. This all says you care about our community, our department. Thank you so much. I'd just like to thank everybody um, who, or congratulate everyone who got awards tonight, and thank you for your dedication and service to the city of West Carrollton and two other departments that you've aided. And I would also like to say to Officer Moore, thank you for um, your act of kindness. It makes me uh, have hope again for our humanity and the hate-filled rhetoric we're in today in the world. Your act of kindness really stands out. I hope you'll always take that with you as you go through the ranks and promote because that will make you a great leader one day. I truly believe that. Thank you, all of you. Yeah. Again, congratulations to you all. I think I, I know that what makes this department what it is, there's, I don't see any tie people around here as the chief and the chief. Those of you that accomplished these things that you were awarded with tonight wasn't done just because of tie. Y'all were a team, and that team is what makes the West Carolina Police Department what it is. And I thank you all very much. And please continue to be a team. 
I certainly like to congratulate all the award winners. You certainly set the, the standard, not just for the police department, but for the city. Um, you certainly are a, a glowing example of the employees that we hope to hire in all of our departments. Um, it, while it's easy, you know, to be proud of each one of you for your commendations, awards, um, we're proud of all of our departments and all of our, our employees. <coughs> you guys certainly shine. Thank you so much for your service. And you too, Trey. Thank you.